We want to have an experience where you, you know, your plane lands in Helsinki, you get off, you take the elevator down, you get on the train, 20 minutes later, Tallinn, elevator up, you walk out. Raiko a place. So, Hiroshi Mikitani, the founder of, uh, of Rakuten, standing next to me. So yeah, these guys are from, uh, you know, Rovi are a bit crazy, but they have like some good ideas. Do you have some particular favorite failures that you have had in your life that uh, enabled you to do something ooh. else? Uh, it's actually much easier to build a tunnel than to create a hit game. Estonia, 1.3 million people, four unicorns. Mm, that's pretty good. That's, I mean, you know, nobody else can do that. Yeah. And, and if everybody else you know, wants to be Silicon Valley. So what we did with Slush, we said that, okay, we'll organize this thing in November. So it's cold, dark, slush on the ground. It's not the Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. It's better. It's not about the tunnel. I mean, it's, it's, it's really about uh, what the tunnel enables us to do. So what are the biggest risks? You have to live and breathe the brand. Uh, what is your favorite bird in Angry Birds? In the beginning, there was uh, a snake. Right, right. Like, and yeah. then there were like this big eagle, right? Right, right. And now, now what? No, I've been basically uh, always been working on like many different things. So uh, of course, right now uh, I'm doing uh, kind of like the tunnel uh, between uh, Helsinki and Tallinn. So that's like one of the uh, bigger projects I'm working on. But I'm also uh, involved with about like I don't know 30 or so uh, different startups. Uh, everything from. Uh, games to kind of like a really big thing which is uh, education so uh, that's actually uh, even bigger than the, the tunnel but then uh, education is also related to the tunnel because part of what uh, the tunnel uh, enables us to do is this uh, massive university platform so uh, again I mean with the tunnel we'll, we're building 20 minute end-to-end -end connection so airport to airport uh, two stations in between all together four different stations, all four station areas will have uh, 50,000 people. So we, we have a space to, uh, you know, have uh, 200,000 new people in this Helsinki Tallinn uh, metropolitan area and 20% will be students. So we need some new universities and stuff. So it's, it's uh, the tunnel is kind of like a minor little detail in, in what we're doing here. I love this idea. There's uh, two things I love it about it. First, mm. I can fly to Miami, so like I can yeah. go to Helsinki and then uh, make yeah. a direct flight to Miami. So yeah, it works. Like instead of like, uh, t t like you can also six... fly directly to New York, Beijing, Shanghai, Chongqing, Guangzhou. Go on, go on. I, I love I love those uh, Tokyo names. three times a day. Uh, so oh yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Oh my god. So uh, when it's gonna be ready? I want to schedule. So yeah, so you can buy tickets now. You go to shop that finest Bay Area that online. So. Okay. We have tickets 50 euros, you know, one way. So then, you know, get on a plane and you're in Miami. Yeah. Or, or then, you know, return is 100 euros. So then we have actually like a super special deal. So you can get like annual pass for like just a thousand euros. And then you have unlimited trips between Helsinki and Tallinn, you know, for, for the year. So it's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's one thing. But yeah, then uh, you can actually use the tickets uh, the 24th of December. Uh, 2024 so that's when we'll have the first uh, trains running so uh, it's uh, you know still a few years out but uh, not that far so they will fly so fast this year so yeah I believe yeah. it's almost like tomorrow. Yeah, it's gonna be like tomorrow yeah, yeah I mean, definitely. It's, it's again uh, I mean I started uh, working on this uh, two and a half years ago so it feels like yesterday but I mean you know time flies when you're having fun uh, but yeah so so uh, yeah it's uh, it's uh, moving very very uh, uh, quickly and uh, you know when I first said that okay let's build a tunnel I of course had no idea on like how to make it happen and I said okay it's like mm, 50 billion and uh, five years and turns out that it actually is like uh, 50 billion more or less and uh, then uh, uh, yeah five years after we get all the different like permits you know so all the uh, required uh, environmental zoning planning construction uh, there's a lot of stuff that you need to do but yeah 24th of December 24. I love this idea. Thank you so much for doing this. So, like, I always wanted to call Tallinn as Monaco. Mm -hmm. Now, like, uh, and I guess, like, uh, I, I guess even people from Dubai will start to come here, yeah, like, and yeah, having yeah. this uh, yeah. weekend trips. And so I actually, trips. I, I was yeah. uh, actually uh, coming from Dubai last night. So, uh, right. so I landed uh, like after 10, uh, 10 uh, last night, and then I took the first ferry at seven thirty. So I uh, had to wait a few hours before I could get to Tallinn. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, like, uh, we had a very good meeting uh, actually today uh, in Ulemiste. So Ulemiste is like a location of like one of the stations. Mm -hmm. uh, so right there at the airport here in Tallinn. And uh, we also had uh, um, uh, people from uh, Zaha Hadid uh, Architects. Mm -hmm. uh, so they've done like some uh, 
super cool designs for uh, like the Ulemiste area, but they're also the guys who are doing, uh, you know, for the harbor of Tallinn, uh, the design for like all the buildings and mm -hmm. uh, all of the... The Porto uh, Franco. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And and uh, I think that Tallinn looks like, uh, you know, uh, very cool. And there's lots of space uh, that you don't have in, in kind of like many cities. So there's a lot of space to create like new uh, environments. And, and, uh, and I think that, you know, like Tallinn, has uh, plenty of uh, room to grow and uh, you know why wouldn't you like to live in Tallinn? Speaking with you, I have a feeling like speaking with a person who really does. Of course. Does. Yeah. So if you say that it's gonna be on 2024 yeah. in December, it mm -hmm. will be on 20. I trust yeah, you like 100% in It might be a bit earlier but yeah I mean that's like the deadline yeah. that we gave ourselves and it's easy to remember date and we picked 24th of December 24 because again everybody knows that Finland home of Santa Claus so mm -hmm. uh, it's a given that Santa Claus is one of the passengers on the first train and then we'll see who else you know will join but that's uh, that's kind of like you know like of course we had to do that. I love it it's also yeah. the birthday of my grandma. Oh even better so uh, yeah yeah. Get yeah. your uh, picture yeah. thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, I yeah. just have to comment I, I yeah. really love the idea about the you're sending already the tickets yeah because again like it it gives you a much easier way to build it because you can yeah. you know the dates and then you yes. can what we need to do every day. Yeah, yeah ab ab absolutely and and uh, and also uh, what uh, it's important I mean uh, of course we don't mind you know making a bit of money on selling tickets but that's not like the main reason the main reason is of, of course I mean we have the date and like all of that to meet but mm -hmm. it's also that we now have about five years uh, to build kind of like uh, the uh, best possible system for ticketing but also for kind of like the whole end-to-end -end, like security everything so we want to have an experience where you you know your plane lands in Helsinki you get off you take the elevator down you get on the train 20 minutes later Tallinn elevator up you walk out. Right, so, so, so basically, Amazing. you don't want to have an experience where you know, like, you have to wait in line for 30 minutes to get on a 20-minute train ride. Mm -hmm. It has to be perfect. And and uh, and uh, again, that means that in order for us to do what I just described, we need to fix, you know, like border control. It mm -hmm. has to be super smooth. Uh, the whole security, you know, getting on and off, you know, trains, planes, everything. So, so uh, again. Uh, for us, the ticketing system is just kind of like a innovation platform or, or you know, like an environment where we can test and uh, of course important that it's not just, oh, this is a demo of the ticketing system. Actually, it's a real ticketing system. Uh, the current state and what we did is uh, very simple. I mean, you can buy like three types of tickets, but uh, what we're working on is, is then uh, the whole security, end-to-end, -end, uh, you know, a ticketing system that is completely digital, no like, uh, you know, uh, paper, obviously, no tokens, no nothing, you just like, you know, off the plane, and then next thing you know, you're in Tallinn, so stuff like that. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, why I find it really interesting is that you're not only building a tunnel, you're building a ticketing system, and the ticketing system can be later used in a different various, in yes. ship, in yes. airports, totally. in all, yeah. all, all the different areas, exactly. again, like you, you're yeah. doing one thing which enables people to do innovation totally, all, totally, totally. And, and, and and it's a massive opportunity for us of course there are plenty of airports in the world yeah, so if we exactly. can uh, make the security system work better and we have two airports Helsinki and Tallinn and they are both uh, super happy to test uh, new approaches because again Helsinki okay we have 20 million passengers and it's growing pretty fast Tallinn has 3 million also growing uh, they're still like in you know global like uh, league like, uh, tiny yeah. and uh, and I think that uh, that gives us the opportunity to uh, create better experiences faster and uh, and I think that uh, you know I, I mentioned that I flew back from Dubai last night and Dubai had uh, 20 some million passengers 10 years ago now 90 million mm -hmm. and we're talking about Dubai it's there in the middle of the sand mm -hmm. you know and there's okay not that much like around. Mm -hmm. Here we're talking about Helsinki and Tallinn, uh, superior geographic location, closest neighbor of China, India and Japan. So there's no reason why uh, we couldn't grow at the pace of Dubai airport, like going from 20 million and we're talking about Helsinki and Tallinn, same thing, uh, going to, uh, you know, like, uh, and actually our prediction is a modest 70 million, but mm -hmm. you know, it could be 90. And uh, that means that there will be massive traffic in the tunnel. So again, business case better. And uh, when you have uh, better connectivity, more people will come. So it tends to be like then 
feeding uh, uh, on on itself and and uh, uh, if you look at then another like interesting competitor that is also like Europe and Asia, Istanbul. Their airport now is uh, actually going to handle 100 million, but they're looking at 200 million passengers through Istanbul. Yeah. So uh, when we talk about like going from current 20 some million with Helsinki and Tallinn to 70 million, people think that, oh, hey, uh, really? That's like a lot. Actually, 10% every year when we get to the 70 million and we're growing at 10, 15%. So it's modest but yeah, uh, yeah. it's quite, uh, final final question about the tickets mm. how many tickets are available for the first ride or uh, it's uh, it's uh, uh, I, I, we, okay so we don't even know the exact number because we haven't like ordered the trains yeah. and we don't know the exact design but i think that we can have like uh, it's gonna land somewhere between a thousand and two thousand oh wow like that's, for the like first but uh, then uh, uh, first day and first days we can handle uh, a lot. So uh, I mean, it's designed to cope with uh, you know 50 million plus passengers every year. So mm. you know uh, millions. So our cover cover man is already buying the tickets. I see he's uh, touching yeah. the mobile. Yeah, phone, and you so. can still you know like get tickets for the first day. So it's it's like makes sense. Yeah. So but, there are some left, right? Yeah, there are some. I mean, we're we're selling like a handful a day, and we haven't even marketed it in like mm. any any way really. So uh, it's actually cool. I was at this uh, startup day uh, mm -hmm. in in Tartu, and and I met with several people that came to me and said, oh, I already bought tickets, and I was like, hey, cool. And and uh, <laughs> I think that that's. Uh, Again, at least some people know about it, yeah. so it's pretty cool. Yeah. There are definitely like question marks now coming up. So like, yeah. people don't really trust in a huge ideas. Sure. Like people don't really trust mm -hmm. in Elon mm -hmm. Musk and so on and so on, right? Yeah. But uh, but that's there might be like some reason for that. But that's you know definitely. like uh, yeah. So what are the biggest risks uh, there in this? But, but uh, I, I think that. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, there. Are, I'm sure there are like lots of risks, and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, of course we look at like. Uh, uh, also always like risks and all that but I think that the important thing is that it doesn't make sense to uh, kind of like make problems out of things that are not problems yet mm -hmm. so I mean like it's it's again if we would always be that oh but this will probably not work and this will not work and this will not work mm -hmm. then we would end up doing nothing and I think that uh, what I've always said is that that you basically you have to do stuff you have to do new stuff and new things and always when you do something new i mean it, it's uh, more likely than not that you will fail but then the great thing is that you will learn and you'll fail again and then eventually probably you'll learn how to walk and and that's how humans learn and that's how we do stuff and and i think that uh, if you look at now the tunnel project i don't think that there is anything that is you know like very difficult and there's definitely nothing that would be like impossible but uh, again we're dealing with uh, these challenges uh, as they you know occur and not we don't worry about oh but this might happen or this yeah. might go wrong that um, of course many things will go wrong then you deal with it and and i think that uh, with the tunnel it's the same as with any you know startup or any like uh, activity that uh, you know the the most certain way uh, not to get stuff done is not to do it. <laughs> so, so I mean that that is you know the thing. And and then when you look at uh, you know many of these things and many of the I mean also what, what I've done over the years. I mean we started Slush together with a few friends in 2008. And I said that okay this is going to be the biggest and best startup event on the planet. And then I was like Peter, what about Silicon Valley? And it's like what about Silicon Valley? I mean I started my career working at HP, the original like startup that Bill and Dave started in there garage in Palo Alto in 1939, so like 90 years ago. And, and uh, you know, uh, again, uh, there, and that's why we suffer all these like garage stories and like all of that. But, but I think that, uh, you know, it, it's always, if you always come up with, oh, but we can't do this in Estonia, or we can't do this in Finland because, I mean, other people are doing better. Actually, absolutely no reason why other people would be doing stuff better. And I always say that, I mean, like, why wouldn't we? You know, why not? And, and uh, it's, it's uh, with everything that uh, it's all about doing. I mean, it's, it's, it's really uh, uh, as simple as that. that I mean, it, it, it's really, you know, no matter if it's a tunnel or making a game, actually many times now uh, I've been saying that it's actually much easier to build a tunnel than to create a hit game. I mean, this is like <laughs> building a tunnel is, is like predictable and you can like, uh, you know, you know, what needs to be done, but to create a hit game nowadays, you know, it's it's uh, you need a lot of luck, uh, not just perfect execution, mm. but you also need uh, 
uh, a bit of luck. And, and uh, I think that, uh, uh, again, I mean, it, it really boils down to uh, uh, not being afraid of trying to do like uh, crazy ambitious things. And, uh, and you, you have to have, you know, like the courage and you can't be afraid of doing. I, I think that uh, if you start being afraid, then uh, for sure uh, you will fail. And, uh, and also uh, you will not get stuff done because in many cases then, oh, but I can't do this. Mm. And you know, like, yeah. I, it, you have to do it's it. inner monologue that, that starts yeah. going, yeah, yeah. Totally. And, and it's, it's also, uh, I think in Finland and Estonia, we're very good at, oh, but you know, like yeah. we can't do this. And you know, like we're very good at being Negative. Uh, negative and mm -hmm. also like super modest. I mean, like it's good to be modest, but then there's this kind of like unnecessary modesty that I mean, if you're good, it's okay. I mean, it's like nothing to be ashamed of, and it's uh, it's something that uh, people are kind of like used to. That if you are, you know, the best at what you do, it's okay to go out there and say that hey, you know, like if you want to have the best result, you should work with you know my company. We know how to do this, you know, and and it it's fine and we shouldn't like yeah we don't really know because then okay you don't really know we'll work with those guys mm -hmm. you know so uh, we can't be too like Estonian and too Finnish yeah. you know like we, we we are very very good in many many areas and I think that uh, okay the younger generation they are I think uh, uh, grown up with more of this kind of attitude but uh, yeah it's it's you know as simple as that you have to do stuff I think it's a yeah, confidence uh, yes totally up, yeah. it, it is about confidence absolutely yeah. so we have this small country with 1.3 millions mm -hmm. so and I believe I trust you and there mm. people could trust you mm. how can we help you to build up this project faster or yeah but I, I think that uh, this is what we what we actually we had some meetings with like various ministers and like yeah. all that and we always say that, that just you know like help us make it happen and I think that what what it means that Again, uh, you know, like we, we need good support from like the public side. Mm -hmm. Also, we need uh, the most important thing is that we need uh, the support of the people. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's very important that the people then, you know, like uh, tell whoever is in charge that this is what we want to do. And I think this is, you know, like as Estonia, as Finland, that this is kind of like important. And I think that many people uh, don't realize that it's not about the tunnel. I mean, it's 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 really about uh, what the tunnel enables mm -hmm. us to do, and and again, uh, it's um, uh, amazing how many people now are interested in this area because they, oh, you're building this tunnel, like tell me more. And okay, it's 15 billion. Wow, that's like a lot of money. And then like, how can we put, be part of it? And I think that this is something that is already. You know, it's marketing. So mm. people are very interested in that. Oh, I have never been to Tallinn. I've never been to Helsinki. I should check it out. Like, what are these guys doing? Oh, they have four unicorns in Estonia, only 1.3 million people. Like, what are they doing there? You mm. know, there must be something that they're doing right. And I think that this is something that, again, it's part of the bigger story. And, and what we are doing with the tunnel, which I think is like the most important thing, we want to make this the best place to raise a family, build a business and to study. So I think that this is, you know, like then, okay, what can we offer families? Fantastic environment, fantastic education. What can we offer businesses? Fantastic environment, you know, you can set up your company, open your mm -hmm. bank account, it's mm -hmm. like a day and mm -hmm. you're like done. And then, you know, uh, these kind of things. So, so uh, and then uh, we can offer students fantastic universities. So they should come here, get their degree, start their company, join an existing business. So that's kind of like the important thing. and. Uh, Again, you know, like the short answer uh, uh, to uh, kind of like your, your question of what you can do, I think that uh, what you should do is uh, do your thing, you know, raise your family, build your company, learn. I think that that's, that's kind of like the, the thing that it's, it's uh, not, you know, like more difficult than that, because that will all like help move things forward. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so you don't need to grab a shovel and <coughs> sure. start digging. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. I, I have an idea. Like, yeah. uh, what about we take two tickets and mm -hmm. we ask people, we don't really ask people mm -hmm. to share any videos, but I really mm -hmm. in love, I felt in love with mm -hmm. this idea. Mm -hmm. What about we take two tickets to the first uh, flight yeah. or yeah. the first, yeah. and we share it, uh, like we give it to the people just mm -hmm. randomly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Who will share this video and share this idea if you love it, if you yeah. like it the way we did. Yeah. So just share it and mm -hmm. we randomly choose two of you, like you and your friend, yeah. like who will go to this train. Yeah. How you yeah. like it? Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. I believe yeah. this. Yeah. Uh, 
2024 is uh, like December. It is a mm. date of mm. a revolution. Like like saying it's, it's a start. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a new time. Yeah. It's a new. Mm -hmm. It's the first date. We're gonna be different. Yeah. like completely yeah, different. Yeah. And I believe because we've always been to Baltics, like mm. within Lithuania yeah. and Latvia. I guess it's gonna be the one step mm. closer but it's to Finland. Like a Nordic country. Definitely. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Say, you know, like uh, I think that this is uh, also uh, uh, you know very important that uh, again. And I think uh, Nordic countries have a lot to offer to the world. And yeah. I think that a lot of people are mm -hmm. now looking to come at the Nordics for uh, direction because we all know like the craziness going on in some other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. So uh, we need some sanity. And I think that if nothing else, the Nordic countries are, are like pretty sane. <laughs> and, uh, and I think that uh, for me, like Estonia is definitely like part of that, like new Nordics, if you will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, oh, there are so many questions we would like yeah. to like to ask, but uh, I go a little bit. Time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I will go a little yeah. bit back. We we mentioned yeah. failures, yeah. Of, yeah. Uh, things failing. Oh, really? do you, yeah. Do, yeah, do, yeah. <laughs> do you yeah. have some particular favorite failures that you have had in your life that enabled you to do something Ooh. else? Uh, you know, of course, as I said uh, before, that when you try new things more. Uh, often than not, you will fail because again, uh, you know, you learn and you, you know, you try, you fail, you try, you fail, and then eventually you yeah. like figure it out. Uh, so, so that's just like human, and that's how the world works. Mm -hmm. But then I think also what is very important, uh, and I think this is again like uh, in Finland and Estonia, that we should also not uh, dwell on like oh we failed and we'll fail again. Mm -hmm. So I think it's also that yes, you learn your lesson and you like uh, take your learnings and then you forget about it and that you don't like, okay, that, you know, oh, I failed and I will fail again and again and again. Mm -hmm. I, I think that it's, it's important to kind of like look forward and not, you know, like, oh, look at history. Yeah, we failed. This is never going to amount to anything. So, so for me, always when I get the question about favorite fa uh, failures, I say that, okay, I already forgot about them. No. So hopefully I learned, but then you know, like I'm, I'm not uh, worried about like the past. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm looking forward, and, and uh, you know, the past. Who cares? I mean, it's, uh, it's really uh, uh, all about like uh, the future. And what's mm. super cool about the future is that you can like do something about it. Yeah. The past, you know, gone. Can't do yeah. anything. Future, mm. you can do anything. Yeah. Now it's, it's very. Now it's really, really interesting how you can just uh, move, move ahead. And, yeah, and talk well about it. Yeah, and I think it's important to, to do that because uh, uh, otherwise it's easy to get sucked into this kind of like yeah. negativity that, oh, but you know, like it failed and we'll fail again and again mm -hmm. and will never amount to anything. I think that you have to, uh, of course, learn, but then also like then uh, very quickly like, okay, now we learned, focus on the future, get, get it done. Mm -hmm. now, what is your favorite bird in Angry Birds? Uh, so I always have to say, you know, because I, my title used to be like the Mighty Eagle, so obviously oh. the Mighty Eagle. But uh, but I, I I think that it's it, it uh, uh, the kind of like the other uh, very uh, important or most important bird is of course like the red bird, and that's like the mm. iconic uh, character, and and you recognize it from like a long mm. uh, distance, and and that is kind of like really uh, what made uh, kind of like Angry Birds happen, that everybody knows like that red bird, and uh, uh, and I think it, it's it's again. Uh, uh, also, if you look at that, that it's it's uh, super iconic. I mean, even if you just see the silhouette of that, you mm -hmm. recognize yeah. it. Uh, so you don't you don't even necessarily need like the red color. But uh, yeah, I think that uh, all brands uh, and all like success stories, you need uh, that kind of iconic uh, character or iconic like. Uh, uh, design, uh, mm. so it's it's uh, like visually, but also like then to go along with that, that brand of course is much more than just like some kind of uh, character or shape. It's it's uh, the whole story and everything, and uh, and I think that uh, yeah, if I look at like Angry Birds and like the Red Bird, that uh, and Angry Birds is also a, a fantastic brand because it's a brand that begs for a question. Like when you hear Angry Birds the first time, you ask that okay, why? Why are the birds angry? Mm -hmm. And once you ask that question, stuck in your head forever. Mm. So, so it's it's uh, super important uh, because uh, the world is full of brands, and and many of these you hear once and then you like forget yep. because they just like they don't like do anything for you. Mm -hmm. And and I think that this is something that again when you think about branding and you think about your business, uh, it's important that of course you have a story and it's real and it's true and like all of that, but it's also 
it should be different. Mm -hmm. So it's not just like just another Silicon Valley, <laughs> you know, like it's you have to do better. Mm. Uh, talking about branding, your mm. self-branding, mm -hmm. you are always known to wear the red hoodies and yeah, red, red yeah, jacket. Yeah. I just want to know how many red hoodies you have. Do we all I have a closet? I have, <laughs> yeah, I, have, I have quite a few yeah. I have, and, and different designs. So uh, this particular design, I think I like only two, but then yeah. I have a bunch of like uh, different ones for different brands. And, mm. and, uh, and actually, I mean... So it uh, always needs to be red? Yeah, I, I'm always, oh, yeah, pretty much always when I'm working, I'm wearing mm -hmm. red. Then like okay. when I'm off, I'm, you know, wearing like other colors. Light but, red. <laughs> but but, but uh, red, red, I mean, like the thing is, it, uh, the, and there's a story uh, to that. So basically I've been wearing red actually, like before Rovio, after Rovio. Mm. And uh, then um, uh, early days of like uh, Rovio and Angry Birds, I wanted to kind of make a point to the team mm -hmm. about differentiation. Yeah. And then I went to this event in, uh, Germany, I don't know, Berlin, Munich or somewhere. And I was on a panel and this was like some kind of serious business event. So this panel with a couple of other guys and uh, you know, they were wearing, you know, like business it's attire. Different. So like dark suit and like all of that super boring stuff. And then uh, I was there in red hoodie. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but that's not like too bad. Uh, yeah, yeah. But, but I mean like, uh, me, right? yeah, 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 it's cool. <laughs> but uh, but uh, then, uh, you know, uh, and then, you know, just as somebody take a picture and then I went back to Helsinki and then I showed a picture and said, okay, now you get it. Yeah. And uh, then uh, Juhana Kotilainen who was in marketing at Rovio, of course, got it immediately that, okay, this is, you know, differentiation, mm. dark suit, dark suit, red hoodie, done. And uh, then uh, he ordered actually the uh, classic kind of like Angry Birds uh, red hoodie with, you mm. know, the bird and, and everything. So before that, I was just wearing like a generic red hoodie mm. like this one. And, uh, and then, uh, I mean, there are so many stories uh, around the red hoodie. I've mm -hmm. been to so many events. I met with so many people just because of red hoodie, mm. and and uh, uh, because it, you know it's it's again part of like uh, how to do branding properly that you have to stand out. I mean, you as a person, you as a company, mm -hmm. you don't want to be like everybody else because if you're like everybody else and you're in a business, let's say games, 700 new games hitting the app store every day. So if you're like just one of 700, who cares? I mean, even if, if it's the best game. In the world, there's you know pretty high likelihood that nobody will ever play the game because you know they, there's no, kind of like no reason to download it. You don't know about it, mm. and and I think that this is you know true for most markets that there is a huge supply, so there's no shortage of supply. You go into the local like supermarket, and then there's you know like uh, shelf after shelf of just like let's say uh, various cola, uh, you know soft yeah. drinks. But then we all know that yeah, probably you'll pick. Coke or Pepsi because you know the brands and yep. then there's like some generic cola but mm. nobody ever or let's say most people don't go in and oh I'm gonna buy a generic <laughs> cola like <laughs> substance yeah. that you're basically going for your Coke Zero or your yep. Pepsi mm. Max or whatever mm. and it's even like specific like sub brand and things so so I think that uh, yes you need to think about uh, how you stand out and how you're different and, and I think that uh, with the red hoodie for me, that's just like part of the uh, differentiation, and uh, and it's it's surprising how well mm. that works because uh, very very few people you know uh, wear uh, red you yeah. know like in in business like context or like anywhere actually. So yeah. it it, uh, it helps. Yeah. Oh, and it has has gone a long way because if you mm. go to Dubai with all the sheiks and everybody's yeah. in business suits, yeah. everybody takes right. you yeah. as normal already. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like no pro no big deal. <laughs> but uh, but it's it's uh, yeah, no, it's also I mean like it's easy for then people to find me. So uh, mm. so uh, it's uh, actually uh, we had the one of the reporters from uh, from Helsinki that actually joined us in Tallinn today, and and I didn't remember, but actually I had met him in 2000 and I don't know 11, 12, mm. some like probably 11, like early days of Angry Birds. And, uh, and uh, I was out like at uh, this camp hotel in, in Helsinki, sitting at the bar, meeting some people. And then he had, I think he had just moved to Finland and he, he saw that, oh, but that that's, must be like that uh, like guy from like Angry Birds, because I was wearing red hoodies. So then he came up, oh, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then and then we did an interview. And, you know, so, so it, it's, it's again, uh, uh, if I would just, been hanging around wearing like some boring, uh, you know, like business attire or like something else that didn't stand out. He would never have found me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, I've my, one of my uh, 
favorite like examples is that I was uh, at this uh, new economy summit. So it's uh, this uh, event in Japan for the new economy, uh, whatever that means. But anyway, organized by uh, Hiroshi Mikitani uh, from uh, uh, founder Rakuten. And uh, then, uh, yeah, so I was there, I'd been asked to kind of like uh, give a talk and then I arrive at the event and then they asked me, that, okay, you know, like, well, or they say like, welcome and is there anything we can do for you? And I said, oh, I saw that, you know, your Prime Minister Abe is uh, here at the event and uh, would be great if I could meet with him. And then they were like, ooh, that, you know, like, uh, and in Japan they never say no, but they say like, oh, it's not so easy to just like go and meet with the prime minister and I said but yeah but I have like a very important message you know to to your prime minister so if you you know could make it happen and then you know uh, hour or so later they came to me and said okay that oh Peter that actually there's this photo shoot uh, you know now with uh, together with the prime minister so if you go there maybe you have a chance to meet with the prime minister mm -hmm. then I go to the room and then we wait and the prime minister is a bit late there's you know like me and 40 Japanese guys and all of the Japanese uh, people are, you know, again, you can imagine room full of dark suits, <laughs> one guy in a red hoodie. And then, okay, prime minister arrives and starts like, okay, walks up to me, obviously guy in red hoodie. And then I say, okay, I'm Peter from Robbie. I'm here to help you with the third arrow in Abenomics. And then he's like, uh, uh, what, what is this? So uh, in Abenomics, uh, you know, uh, there's the third arrow is about structural reform, education reform. So I start talking that, oh, we could, you know, like help with that then. And then actually, because of that, and then I had uh, Hiroshi Mikitani, the founder of, uh, of Rakuten, standing next to me. So, yeah, these guys are from, uh, you know, Rovi are a bit crazy, but they have like some good ideas. And, and then actually we decided <laughs> to organize Slush Tokyo. Wow. And that's how that kind of like happened. That's how it happened. And, uh, and, uh, but again, uh, only because, you know, Red Hoodie, guy zooms in, who are you, blah, 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 done. Amazing story. So mm. it, it's uh, it's again uh, it works, and mm. I think that 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 is something that I always uh, believe that uh, it, it, it's about doing things differently. And doing is kind of like the key word that uh, you know you have to be like in the right place, mm. uh, right time. But then you also have to make sure that if you're there at the right time at the right place with a hundred other people, like then. You need to make sure that you also stand out from those. So it's not mm -hmm. good enough, right time, right place, if other people are also in the right time, mm -hmm. right place. So, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. And then you have to have this red hoodie. Yeah, um, or, or a funny hat or, yeah. you know, like uh, yeah. a tattoo or, <laughs> or, you know, like red nose. Or I don't know. But, uh, you know, like it's, it's, it's um, uh, yeah, you have, to, you have to have something that, uh, you know, helps people like remember that, oh, yeah, that guy, I remember he was wearing that funny hat or mm -hmm. you know the white shoes or like whatever yeah i just like you know like i love what you're saying sorry for so many compliments i'm not the guy who's <laughs> no, like you no, know no. giving the compliments no no you're estonian i know so it's like a huge honor <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah so anyways I, I have a feeling that i'm like uh, watching a gary v show like every word is kind of wins them like i have to like <laughs> tweet, write, write, tweet it, write it and write it down <laughs> A question about the, the branding, personal branding and a company branding. So, mm -hmm. like, it's so yeah. important nowadays, like, uh, what, what is the difference between the startups and the big uh, companies, right? Mm -hmm. Is that the startups are so high, high, high level in communication, mm -hmm. they communicate so fast, that's why mm -hmm. they grow so fast, within mm -hmm. like a few years they can become mm -hmm. unicorn, is sure. it possible? Mm -hmm. And it's only due to the communication. Mm -hmm. And what do you think, like, about mm -hmm. the, like, the brand ambassador when you have somebody working for you and who is wearing great hoodie saying, mm -hmm. okay, I'm brand ambassador of a Rovi and I would mm. like to be the same way as Peter does like how important yeah, is I, it I, I think that that uh, it's not just like uh, you know uh, so so first of all I, I think that uh, uh, whatever you do you shouldn't call that uh, person like the brand ambassador yeah. mm -hmm. so that is because I think that uh, it's also it has to be like a, uh, that person has to have the power to make stuff happen as yeah. well mm -hmm. so so mm -hmm. uh, you know like do you want to go and talk to the President, Prime Minister, or the Ambassador, probably go and talk to the Prime Minister because that's the guy in charge. So, uh, you know, like you, uh, of course, you can also like have coffee with the Ambassador, but uh, the Ambassadors are not the guys making the calls. So you want to go to the Prime Minister or mm -hmm. the President or the CEO or yeah. whatever. So, so I, I but yeah, that's, that's kind of like uh, important detail. Uh, but, but I think that um, uh, what is also important, like with all branding and like with everything, that it's not just okay, let's, you know, like uh, wear a red hoodie or like, uh, let's, you know, like do some kind of 
uh, crazy visual thing, but it, it, it has to be true, it has to be authentic. So, so uh, you have to live and breathe the brand. Mm. And the brand is not just, as I said, it's not just like some kind of visual identity, but it's everything. Yep. And uh, what I always said at Rovio, and I mean the same is true for everything I do now, that, that like everything we do is marketing, or then you could also look at it that nothing or, or none of the things that we do is actually marketing. So there's kind of like no kind of like border, there's no like uh, separation that mm -hmm. everything you do is part of the experience that you provide for your fans. And I talk about fans because fans, uh, you know, it's not customers, it's not users, but you have to provide experience at that level that you uh, deserve to talk about fans. Mm -hmm. So uh, branding and like all of this, it's all part of like the overall experience. So it's the story, it's, mm -hmm. and the story has to be true. I mean, it's, it's again, uh, what's great about stories that, uh, you know, you very quickly recognize and you see if it's like real and if it's true. And yep. I think that's something that's very important. The story. Yeah. yeah. The narrative and yeah. the story. I, I have heard yeah. that the narrative is actually the, yeah. and with the narrative, you build the story yeah, that you need I, to know. And I, I think that also, also there that it's, it's, um, uh, it, it, it's, it's again like the, uh, the point is that it needs to be authentic. So I think that also, uh, if you, uh, I think that you have to be also a bit careful that if it's too slick, if it's too carefully like engineered, mm -hmm. it's not, uh, it doesn't feel uh, good. It doesn't feel real, and then it doesn't come like work. So mm -hmm. it's it's okay if it has some like rough edges. It's not perfectly polished because life. I mean, it's like. Yep. Uh, if it's too perfect, too polished, then you can't like, uh, you, you can't like uh, grab it, you know, or you can't like, you can't like uh, uh, get a hold of it, kind of thing. So it, it's it's uh, it's very important that uh, it's real. Yeah. yeah. So you mentioned before in the beginning uh, about education is even bigger. Yeah. Uh, thing Six point three do. trillion, and uh, you know, counting. So it's the big, second biggest market after food. Wow. So uh, yeah, my my plan there is is that uh, you know yeah together with a few friends uh, we'll uh, reduce the market size to three trillion, so like half because we think that we can make education more efficient and mm -hmm. more powerful and more impactful. So let's say that we can reduce it to three trillion, and then because we're modest Finnish people, if we capture like ten percent, we're doing okay. So that's like three hundred billion a year. Yeah. So you know not too bad. So for the next ten years, uh, the plan is to transform education globally and then capture. Our fair share and of course I can't do that alone so like some tensor companies that I either started or just advising or just you know like somehow somehow uh, involved with uh, we're like executing on that but that's uh, a totally long different. story yeah. so uh, so uh, probably uh, I need to kind of like start heading for my my dinner but uh, yeah. but yeah that's something that I'm uh, very focused on and, and we're doing that uh, like all over the planet right now. So you'll hear more about that in yeah. like not too distant yeah. future. In the course of the future. But I wanted to know uh, how <laughs> much of this knowledge you have now did you did you get uh, from the education or you, all is based on experience no, I, based I, I, on I think what that, is you uh, You know, uh, of course you, you need like some uh, foundation and I think that uh, there's uh, like the basic education in Finland has always or mm. the last 50 yeah. years been like very good and uh, that's good. Uh, uh, I think maybe the best thing about education in Finland, and I think it's probably true here in Estonia as well, is that our educational system doesn't kill initiative, it doesn't kill creativity. Mm. And that, that's maybe the most important thing. Uh, lots of things that we can do better in both Finland and Estonia, but at least we have that. And uh, then, uh, you know, okay, I, uh, uh, well, I think that you can learn uh, like uh, important uh, skills and mm. uh, uh, important things in, in universities as well. So I, I really think that that is where a lot of innovation like originates. But uh, definitely for me, and I think that if you ask like anybody, most you learn by doing and you, uh, you don't really have a substitute for that. And I think that then uh, in the future, we need to rethink like the whole education anyway. I mean, we talk about lifelong learning and these mm. kind of things for mm. a long time. And I think that that's absolutely what we need so mm -hmm. we need to blur like the uh, separation between you know like okay now i'm studying and now i'm working that it's actually like one and the same thing and you should have a very easy way that okay now i need to go to say university or i need to take an online course or something like that that you can 
easily do that as part of your like job. Mm-hmm. Whatever you happen to do, work at a startup or a corporation or the government. I mean, like uh, we, we need to uh, make sure that we can enable people to constantly learn, mm-hmm. and you have to have this kind of like uh, hunger and this desire to learn. Because if you don't have that, you know, you might as well be you know dead. Because it, it's it's yeah. if you, when you stop learning, yeah, then mm-hmm. you know, like it's over. I think what you described is curiosity. Yes, it, totally. For, yeah. for me, yeah, yeah absolutely, like, and absolutely. And since you are always curious to go, yeah, to the I'm next always level. like always, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> interested in learning, learning like new things and and mm. uh, doing new things. So I think that that's uh, you know also an uh, important part of life. Mm. We have a lot of great companies in mm-hmm. Estonia. Uh, do you have any favorite companies in Estonia? Favorite companies in Estonia? Uh, oh, favorite company besides, in uh, besides, uh, yeah, let's see, mm, the ID. Uh, Ready? Uh, yeah, yeah, ready, yeah, yeah, ready, yeah, ready, yeah, exactly. Yes. So I think that uh, like, uh, uh, yeah, they they've been doing like a really good job, and mm-hmm. of course growing like crazy and and uh, solving a very important uh, problem. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that they did a very good job listening to you know like what they did at Y Combinator mm-hmm. and like doing mm-hmm. things differently. So mm-hmm. uh, it's very impressed with the presentation uh, that uh, that was done uh, in, in, at uh, Startup Day in Tartu. Yeah. So so that was uh, good. But uh, I think that I mean again. Uh, of course, you have like uh, the up and coming like uh, unicorns, you know, like the pipe drive guys, uh, mm-hmm. you know, and and uh, you have a lot of like bubbling under like uh, cool startups, and of course, uh, uh, you know, uh, I've been working a lot with uh, with uh, Roman, so Rommi, as we call him, uh, the guy who is building the Novi, you know, like electric car. Mm-hmm. Uh, so mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. Uh, like a super cool project, uh, yeah. and uh, and I like the dedication and like making stuff happen on uh, like mm. bootstrapping the whole thing pretty much, and uh, uh, that's been like uh, super cool. So I'm waiting for getting the first car. Are uh, they going to be in the islands? Are uh, the probably, only cars? probably we'll have. Uh, I don't know about the island, but at least the other stations <laughs> we need some something like that. So so that's. But yeah, I think that there's uh, a lot of uh, very cool like. Mm. Uh, uh, you know, projects, startups, uh, everything here. So uh, now we just need to make sure that we can get, uh, uh, or or uh, we can ensure that there is enough talent. So I think that yeah. we need to yeah. need to do that because uh, you know the downside of like now many of these successful startups that it's not so easy to find people, yeah. and uh, we need to do something about that. But again, that's where the tunnel and the you know like stages Island, come in. So yeah. 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 Peter, Perfect. thank you so much. So, hey, thank you. just to conclude, we have mm-hmm. uh, two tickets. Like, just uh, share it to your Facebook, add a friend. Yeah. And are you going to be there on the first tra- train? Of course. Yeah, so yeah. we're gonna have two tickets on the first train with Peter and Santa Claus. And, and Santa, Santa Claus, Claus. Yeah. maybe two in one. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, yeah. thumbs up. Thank you. Yeah. Are, are the trains also going to be red? Uh, we haven't decided on the color, but you know, like you never know. You never know, but it could well be. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm looking thank forward so to them. Thank amazing. you. Hey, thank you. Hey, yeah, it's great. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Hey.